So there was a recent article by Axios and it's pretty crazy. It talks about how we are going behind the curtain and coming soon, there will be PhD level super agents. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to exactly what's being said here. The key terminology being used. They don't just say agents are being created. They say super agents. And this is going to be one of the craziest articles you're probably ever going to see because the implications are truly profound. So it says right here that this is OpenAI's next major breakthrough. So it says architects of the leading generative AI models are a buzz that a top AI company, possibly OpenAI, in the coming weeks will announce a next level breakthrough that unleashes PhD level super agents to do complex human tasks. It says that we've learned that Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, who in September dubbed this the intelligence age and is in Washington this weekend for the inauguration, has a scheduled closed door briefing for the US government officials in Washington on January the 30th. So now this is crazy because a closed door briefing is essentially a private meeting that's not open to the public or the media. It's basically like these government officials are having a super secret meeting that needs to be kept private. Now, these types of meetings are common in government when officials need to discuss sensitive or confidential information. Now, only specifically invited participants are allowed to attend. And in this case, it means that Sam Altman would be privately meeting with government officials and he wouldn't be having a public hearing or press conference where, you know, news reporters could potentially attend or even listen in. Now, what's crazy about all of this is that most people are currently speculating that this technology is so significant that they have to brief government officials ahead of time to basically give them a heads up on how society may change. And for historical context, we've seen this before. When ChatGPT was about to be released, there were similar briefings. When AI companies expect major capabilities breakthroughs, they often engage with the government first. And during the early days of social media, companies like Facebook had similar meetings about content moderation and election integrity. Now, what makes this one particularly stand out for us is the fact that the timing of this is really, really important. This is coming off the rumors after a major OpenAI breakthrough. And when we actually do take a look at the level of officials involved, it's in Washington DC with real government officials. And so whilst there might be a lot of speculation about whether or not these companies are completely hyping or LARPing, having a scheduled closed door briefing with the US government officials clearly states that something is going to be said in that meeting that is of high importance. Now, what's also very fascinating is that we do have the fact that Mark Zuckerberg and others have publicly talked about AI replacing mid-level software engineers and other human jobs this year. Meta said that, you know, we are going to effectively have an AI that can be a sort of middle level engineer at your company that can write code. And this is what he said in the Joe Rogan interview. Probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. What was crazy was that the Salesforce CEO actually said something rather similar talking about software engineers. Salesforce, we're seriously debating maybe we aren't going to hire anybody this year because we have seen such incredible productivity gains because of the agents that work side by side with our engineers and making them more productive. And we can all agree that software engineering has become a lot more productive in the last two years with these basically these new models. Now, crazily as well, we do have the fact that these AI systems have currently been exceeding projections. It says that our sources in US government and leading AI companies tell us that in recent months, the leading companies have been exceeding projections in AI advancement. And I would say that this is probably accurate. When we actually take a look at how quickly AI development has gone with the thinking models and the new paradigm, I would say that with all of the research that we've seen recently, including research papers, AI has definitely gone a lot faster. I think the search test time paradigm is definitely something that accelerated the area as a whole because no longer are we relying on human data, we're relying on synthetic data and more neurosymbolic approaches 
that are akin to how humans learn and actually reason and solve problems. And this is where OpenAI last week released an economic blueprint arguing with the right rules and infrastructure investments, AI can catalyze a reindustrialization across the country. Now, of course, I do want to state that with every AI announcement, we always must distinguish the hype from the reality of said projects. And one of the things that this article actually talks about is the fact that AI investors have reason to hype small advancements as epic ones to juice valuations to help fund their ambitions. And this is pretty true because recently OpenAI actually did announce that they are going to need more money. You can see here it says OpenAI says it needs more capital than we'd imagined as it lays out a for-profit plan. In a blog post on Friday, OpenAI laid out its plans for changing its corporate structure to allow for more capital and raising of funds. So we have to understand that whilst, yes, AI is advancing rapidly, if OpenAI aren't very public about the kinds of advancements that they're making, and if they don't continually, you know, push the news that their software is going to do amazing and amazing things, then maybe investor sentiment might change and they may lose funding that they desperately need to keep the company afloat. I do think that this is something that is 50-50. Number one, they of course want to create hype around their product because that makes sense. And number two, of course, they are going to need some investors to ensure that they can make it to the finish line of creating AGI. Now, something that I have seen myself across the AI industry, mainly with these OpenAI employees, is that these employees are definitely spooked and jazzed by the recent progress. It says, sources say that the coming advancement is significant. Several OpenAI staff have been telling friends that they are both jazzed and spooked by the recent progress. As we told you in the column on Saturday, Jake Sullivan, the outgoing White House National Security Advisor, with security clearance for the nation's biggest secrets, believes that the next few years will determine whether AI advancements end in catastrophe. And this is where the article dives into super agents in more detail. It talks about how you can imagine a world where complex tasks aren't delegated to humans, but instead they're executed with the precision, the speed and creativity you'd expect from a PhD level professional. It says we're talking about super agents, AI tools designed to tackle messy, multi-layered, real-world problems that human minds struggle to organize and conquer. They don't just respond to a single command, they pursue a goal. Super agents synthesize massive amounts of information, analyze options, and deliver products. That's pretty different from traditional AI agents that we do know, because even right now, we could argue that AI agents are in a pretty rudimentary phase where they need a lot of scaffolding to achieve a lot of tasks. But we do know that OpenAI is usually at the frontier of when it comes to any kind of AI software. We've seen what they've been able to do with the voice technology, real-time, video, and vision. So having super agents is something that I do believe they'll be able to do because I've actually used Google's deep research, which I believe is on the back end, just a bunch of research agents that are able to synthesize data from the web. And so far with that, I've seen a tremendous amount of results. And I do believe that that is going to be something that, you know, OpenAI is going to probably exceed. Now, when we do take a look at these super agents, we can take a look at what it says here. It says build from scratch. Imagine telling your agent, build me a new payment software. The agent could design, test and deliver a functioning product, make sense of chaos, you know, for financial analysis of potential investment. Your agent could scour thousands of sources, evaluate risks, compile insights faster and better than a team of humans and master logistics planning an off-site retreat the agent can handle scheduling travel arrangements handouts and more down to booking a big dinner in a private room near the venue overall we have three different scenarios that leverage the ai's capabilities to make decisions based on various pieces of information and come together formulate a plan and deliver a result and if this is true if this is what super agents are going to be able to do then it makes sense for OpenAI to be able to you know talk to the government to tell them that, look, the economy is rapidly going to change within the next 24 to 18 months. And of course, the government is going to need to prepare for that kind of change. Now, of course, this article does talk about the other tweets and the other side of this information and about how Noam Brown tweeted that there's lots of vague AI hype on social media, but there's good reasons to be optimistic about further progress, but plenty of unsolved research problems remain. And this is, of course, the fact that Unfortunately, we haven't managed to solve the hallucination problem in AI. And if that problem does persist in AI, then, you know, using these agents, you know, wide scale is going to be a very bad problem slash large issue when it comes to deployment. And remember, it was OpenAI that did say that they have, you know, begun to turn their aim beyond that to super intelligence in the true sense of the word. They love their current products, but they are here for the glorious future. And with super intelligence, they can do pretty much everything. So this is going to be something that I personally do believe. OpenAI might not be overhyping in the sense that, you know, they're having 
conversations with the government. And of course, we've seen the research papers that caused pretty much everyone to freak out at OpenAI. So with that being said, let me know what you think about the super agents, if you think that this is going to truly change the world and what you think OpenAI has in store for us. Ugh.